Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And today we are talking about the season one finale of Andor, episode 12, Rick's Road. Do we know who Rick's is? <laughs> I don't know, but he's got a Rick's road named after him. Rick's <laughs> I mean, I reckon under all that dust, there's just loads of bricks. It's a really nice brick road. Um, yeah, Rick's Road. We've heard the name throughout this entire season. We sort of figured it was like that main drag in front of the hotel by the tower and everything. But yeah, love it. Great name. And I felt like just with that title, you know that it's going to go crazy. <laughs> right. But we're not going to go crazy alone. With us today, <laughs> uh, we have from Geek Dad Life and various other podcasts over the years. Uh, you've seen him before. I think closing out Obi-Wan with us. Uh, it is Jay. Oh, hey jay how you doing i'm doing well i'm doing well yeah rick's road as elton john famously said goodbye to something rick's road was that was that on the disney concert that just came out i didn't exactly I didn't it's it. it's it's corporate synergy so i guess back and now it's just straight in there yeah <laughs> let's um, uh let's do what jay does at the beginning of every episode we're gonna say hi to the chat uh lucha johnny's here mm-hmm Stevie, Sarah, and Jeremy Kelly. Um, Lucha's not here yet. He's uh, actually just popping in to say hi. And, of course, our number one supporter. They're here every single week. They're always the first to comment. StreamYard. <laughs> adding, StreamYard. adding new features. Adding new features this week with some local <laughs> recording that threw us just before we went live. But yeah. still, well, Jay still Andrews not. Here. Uh, Jay Andrew is here as well. The, 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 the new feature is, which is something I could have freaking used on my michael <laughs> giacchino interview yeah. was local recordings which means it would have recorded my video yeah. on my hard drive mm-hmm. and so i wouldn't like a look like a goddamn sega cd game <sighs> <laughs> okay yeah there we go goodbye ferrix ricks road mm, that's go. it that's it does it drive you nuts that you can't click on the comments a little bit <laughs> it's hard to turn that off it's hard to turn off the the right. comment watching but so know. okay jay you you know this we've been talking about it and it, we don't need to talk about it sure but the back end of Streamyard mm-hmm. is a little clunky with the tabs and trying to get from one thing to another right oh absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. um so that's where you just have to be good at like hey Quick say clicking. something yeah 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 if you see it would be a nightmare to mistake. do a point well i mean i Ralph, you do some shows on your own. Like it must be a pain in the ass. Like if you're trying to interact yeah. with people at any point. Yeah. yeah. If I watch Toy Geeks every week at nine o'clock Eastern Time on Geek Dad Life, and anytime I see Jay going like this, <laughs> I know <laughs> the show is almost over. He's ready to wrap things up. He's looking for that button. End. End. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about Streamyard. They have. They have. We've reached out to them. They have great. responded and said, we'll do what we can. We'll send it to our thing. So we're hoping for a nice streamlined backend. But one day. But you know, it's still a great service. It really is. Yeah, it's it like, is. It's when we bring these things up, it's such a minor little nitpick. Yeah. And like that's that's kind of one of these things that, like, again, look at that for a transition. That takes me into something that I just want to mention about this episode mm-hmm. in particular. And it's gonna be. I can see it now. The Lucha Johnny, you might want to bounce. Um, it's going to be something that I can just see the tacky headlines on the YouTube thumbnails of a, uh, is this, uh, does Star Wars have a character problem or a, a oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, survivor problem? Because this episode, it shocked me how many of the main characters or and just even like side characters survived this one. Mm-hmm. Everybody. It was, yeah, I mean, we, we lost a couple Marva of... came back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somehow. Um, <laughs> you're right. You're 100% right. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. But it was just, it's just one of those things. I'm like, no, that's not a problem. It's done mm-hmm. well. It's told well. Yeah. Like, but it's... I feel like people are going to be, like, clasping at straws trying to find some big flashy headline that they can put on their, their thumbnail. What, what was great, though, was there's a whole ship full of people... And I'm like, none of these people are another Star Wars. Exactly. Is this going down? And so Tony Gilroy is like, I'm going to pack all the all the side characters into this one ship. We'll get <laughs> like if Cassian stayed in that ship, 
We're like, oh, this ship is fine. Uh-huh. Him leaving, I'm like, oh no. Ooh, but like, it could go either this, way. Like it's the same thing. I was just like, the only one with plot armor in here is Andor, and he's getting off the ship. I the whole time until I saw it completely leave Ferrix. I was yep. like, that thing's gonna blow up and then everyone's yep. gonna die. Well, I mean, and like he said it, he said it before. He's like, I've lost everyone. So I still am scared for them. But like, yeah, it's it's one of those yeah. things. Like we we heard a few weeks ago that the actress who plays Bix like was like being brought back and was doing more Star Wars or something. And we, at the mm. time, it was before she'd been like kidnapped or sure. before she'd been imprisoned. So we were like, okay, cool. Maybe we'll get a Ferrex spinoff or something like that. Mm. Or like, I don't know. Now I'm like, well, that's a spinoff shit right there. Like that's a crew that I'd follow. Yeah. I'd watch all of those guys. Ooh, we've, got the, crew. we've got the cute droid. We've got the big yeah. dude. We've got yep. the the heroine. We've got the mm. oldest, like the elder stateswoman, like mm-hmm. leader, like the mousy kid. Character. The mousy kid, like yep. the, yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> it's right there. It's it's ready made. If they want right. to go that way, other way is you kill them straight away, <laughs> and that that like sets up Cassian. And then of course you could just do nothing with them. Like, and it's like a it's that looming thing of similar to his sister. That plot thread never came back. And it's like the yeah. I'll find you of of mm-hmm. what he was saying. The way he was leaving felt it. That reminded me of him and his sister. Ooh, like yeah, just yeah. the I'll find you, I'll find you of it mm-hmm. all. Where we know that that's what he was doing. Yeah. But he hasn't yet. And it's and they've got faith in him. But it's like, does he have faith in himself? Because he knows that when he tries to find people in the past, it hasn't always worked out. Yeah. Well, I think he's like, he's almost okay. Or or is it the you know, family is the friends you make along the way kind of moment for him? <laughs> just like he was searching for this sister, it's probably dead. But what he maybe finally realized found like, his, this family. Is his family, like this, is, absolutely. Uh, and they seem like a great family. Like we've, oh yeah, a couple of like Jesse. We've only met Jesse a couple of times, but I feel like you get to know these characters enough. We know that all of them were caring for Marva mm-hmm. in their own way, and so because yeah. of that, we care about them. Yeah. And um, Willem, oh, uh, oh Wilman, Will, yeah, Wilman Pack, the the younger pack. Um, mm-hmm. Just that that cross cutting at the beginning where we see like yeah. just the anger and sadness in his eyes. Um, we've we've talked about it throughout this season, but the face acting, everyone is just doing amazing face acting in this entire show. Because you know, it just it takes time. I, I, I it is like we've talked about before. Like this is a grown up Star Wars where yeah. it doesn't ha- worry about like hanging into a scene a little bit longer, even though maybe the pacing makes it a little bit slower, but it just makes the the drama that much more accentuated like there was even that scene where uh the shaved head dude got yeah. shot and then he's dead he's lying dead and they they hung on his face one. yeah a long time. Uh, that's exactly as soon as you were yeah. saying like they'll hang on a shot that's exactly mm-hmm. the shot that like jumped out for me it was yeah, yeah. Zanwan, the guy who like the transport guy yes um when he got shot off the back of a stormtrooper mm-hmm. uh it was yeah. like it just lingered on him and it's like yeah. okay this is the cost this is yeah. the real people that we've got to know Mm-hmm. sacrificing themselves for yep. the greater good yep um and so yeah i just uh, uh it, it, every like yeah i think because even that shot with um uh, was it was it william william uh will wilman wilman Wil- uh, wilman because i saw the 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 you know that's the i don't know 3d shot or that little puck thing with his face mm-hmm. or whatever i was like is that Andor? what is that i was like oh it's his dad okay you know mm-hmm. like just again just taking the time it took a while to get to that, and it just made yeah. it hit so much harder. Like, like so much about this episode is uh, having the patience to make things hit harder. Like the Marva and her her big triumphant moment at, at first, when um, you know, when when Andor meets and I'm blanking on his name, I'm the bigger guy. Uh, in the Brazo. thing, was it Brazo? Brazo. Uh, when uh, he's telling him about his mother, I was like, God, why does she just like film a message or something? And then he could see it. I would probably, I was crying already, but I'd probably be crying more. <laughs> I was like, Oh no, they saved that moment so that yeah. it was this much more impactful triumph moment just for the every character. Like every mm-hmm. character yeah. was moved by that speech, and I was just like, that having that patience to be like not letting the the air out of the uh, uh, the the bottle. Uh, is I, a testament to this show and just how how well. But also, like also like uh, some of the complaints I saw for the show were that we didn't see Marva's death, mm-hmm. 
and almost like we got robbed of our final moments with her, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was perfect setup for this episode yes. where we get her final moments. Yeah, um, it's, I, it's. I was on Holdo last week, Holdo Maneuver podcast, uh, friends of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was on their podcast last week, and I was trying to fight that point that it better that we didn't didn't yeah. see her death. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So hopefully, hopefully on this week, their episode. They, they, uh, they yeah, noticed that because that, that, it was it it because uh, my whole line of thinking was deaths aren't convenient in real life, mm-hmm. like and in Star Wars, deaths are always convenient for <laughs> like the story, you know. Oh, yeah. So if we're doing it this way, it, it just shows the foresight that the creators had to uh, do that off screen, yeah. knowing that this moment full well was coming up, and so. I mean, what it's, you, you know, it's you, people say that it's uh, like, it's a more like grown up Star Wars, Star Wars for adults. <laughs> That's my Obi-Wan <laughs> convenient death move. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing, like all of the deaths have, they've moved the plot forward, but they've yeah. come, yeah. they've either been like something that we've not seen in Star Wars, but it's so relatable and real worldy, or it's been they've come at an inconvenient time, but they still will propel the story forward. But mm-hmm. like you think about Nemec, Nemec dying in that, that ship as it was climbing. And yeah. it's, it's that is integral into yeah. like making Cassian who he is and turning mm-hmm. him into the rebel that he becomes. Yep. But the way it came, when it came, it's like, Oh God, kid, we need you right now. Like you're the one who can essentially get us out of here. Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. but then like it was so moving for his like his you know manifesto or whatever that was like mm. his voice reading it, um I, again like it, it it's even though he died I don't know six episodes or it was still so impactful and it, it the character still had weight behind their yeah, words the, the character was still there it's like we yeah. don't need force ghosts when you've got yeah. an audio book you know yeah yeah, yeah. um that I love that scene I mean I, I love so much about it if there's any kind of letdown i had was almost like to your point like so many people did survive and it was but it, it makes they're, they're setting up a season two so there there has to be like right. un un but i even then i still dug it i loved i love the the very the, the last scene with luthan and in, in the ship and and just that little smile that he had but i loved luthan's total arc in this episode it was very good stevie uh, stevie was for, saying for she was a little bit disappointed well, um in the ending stevie said she was a little disappointed in the ending and uh i i understand it but at the same time like the way this episode played out um luthan wanted to kill andor yes and mm-hmm. dedra wanted him alive which yeah. is what it's like yeah. i was like holy crap like is this what we're doing for um, the same reason right yeah. she, the line yeah. because she knew that he had information and he wanted yeah. him dead because he knew so, that he had the information yeah so by the, both end, sides. Yeah. by the end of the episode, um, Andor says, you were here to kill me, weren't you? And Luthen's like, yeah, it's kind of tough. Like, everybody in the cast, every single character in the show is looking for Andor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not a single one of them found him. Yeah. Nobody found him. Andor let him self mm-hmm. known to whoever he trusted and who he wanted to know. Yeah. And yeah. so by the time he he sneaks onto Luthen's ship without Luthen's ship alerting him. Yeah. Without Luthen knowing Th- and saying telling Luthen like you were trying to kill me. Everyone's trying to kill me. Nobody can uh here. Now's your shot. Go ahead and kill I, me. Yeah. I don't care. And Luthen's like and he says you can either kill me or record or you, can, or, you, yeah. you can record or, me. Yeah. Take me yeah. in. Or take yeah, me take in. me in. Take take me I, in is the I words like he my, uses. Take me in better. I do. Like, it's just, so Luthen's it's, like, yeah. Luthen's like, holy shit. Um, this guy. But it's what passed. he wanted from the start. <laughs> it's it is. It's, it's, yeah. like, that's what he it's, saw in him, right? Like, and it's the mirror of the end of episode three and the end of this one, where they're in the sa- the framing is exactly the same on the ship and everything yeah. about it. It's it's that's what Luthen wanted, but Cassian wasn't there yet. Mm-hmm. And through everything mm-hmm. that he's been through since then, and even before then. He's he's got to that point, and so that's what that smile was from Luthen. Yeah. It's like a, I don't need to kill him, and I think mm-hmm. that that's what Luthen was doing through this entire episode, where he barely said anything. He was in the background, like as yeah. soon as the fighting started, he didn't get involved. He didn't go and save anyone. He didn't mm-hmm. give a shit about Vel or Sinter. Like he bounced. 
He just yeah. got the hell out of there because everyone is expendable to him. It's for the cause. It, the so, whole thing with Krieger. It's exactly. like he doesn't care what lives are lost. Mm-hmm. And that's for the greater this, good. Yeah, yeah, and I think this changes things. Marva's speech and and I think that's think that's when we speech, see yeah. when we see him watching Marva's speech. Mm-hmm. He's he's seeing that and going, "This is the woman that raised that guy. I saw something in that guy already." Yeah. But this mm. is this is like okay, it's not genetics, but it's like this is his parent right there, and it's yeah. like there is definitely something with him. I'll. I'll get to him when I get to him, but like he could have stuck around. He could have tried to find Cassian in, in that town during this kerfuffle, but he didn't. He moved away, and there was a few <laughs> moments where he was like looking back, and he's it's like he's he's contemplating what the next move is. For the first time in this show, he's been unsure mm-hmm. of what he should do next. And that uncertainty sort of led him back to his ship. He was just gonna leave. Yeah. And then Cassian was one step ahead of him for the, like, it's the, again, the first time that someone's been one step ahead of him. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love that not only is he probably saying, like, oh, this is the person that, you know, instilled whatever sense of value system to Andor, but also it's just like he's seeing the fruits of his own work, right? He's, yeah. you know, his, his kind of his big speech was, I am setting up a future that I will not get to be a part of. But it was a very similar first, speech. Right. And then he's seeing, he's actually getting to see, this is a ripple effect of mm. Aldani. This is a mm. ripple effect of all of the sacrifice that he's put into this. And I think that is a that is another element of kind of a, a shift for Luthen here. Um, that I and to your point of like the, uh, just showing the faces and the acting in the faces and all the like his just response to as the Marvel speech is going. I saw a lot of that in there as well. Mm. This feels like the first time he's seeing this shit in person. Yeah, exactly. Like he's not like he he he's like usually the man the Krieger behind the thing. Curtain. Yeah, Krieger thing is like oh it's thirty people. He doesn't know those people. He's just like yeah. oh those thirty people are gonna die. Same with Aldani. Mm. Yeah, he probably expected all them to die. Yeah. yeah, he went to tell Saw not to get involved because he knows Saw. He's more he's closer yeah, with Saw. Um, yeah. so yes, there is the element of he knows who he is, and there's a, a risk of compromise. But mm-hmm. it's also probably in the same way that I don't think he'd want Mon Mothma to be out on the front line sort of thing. It's sure. there is. There's those people. I, Vel is being the only one. He's is the only exception, but one person amongst her team, and he wanted to keep himself separate from that. It's it goes both ways. It's the less is less knowledge. You know, it's mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. We talked about earlier in the season how at the end of the third one, uh, Cyril and what's his name Linus <laughs> were sort of more radicalized at the end of the Ferric, the first Ferrex uh-huh. sort of riot. Um, I feel like at the end of this, like at the beginning of this episode, where we see uh, Willem building his bomb, mm-hmm. that and and we're cutting around to the other people on Ferrex. Yeah. We see Brazo, we see uh, even Nurchi, who we'll talk about later, um, and the other the other folks that we sort of met along the way. Um, it's like it's the radicalization of the youth and of the populace on the whole, but it's it's the same thing. It's you oppress us. Or you you push against us and we rise up and get more radical and then mm-hmm. you start oppressing us and that's when the kickback comes in, and it's it's it was in the manifesto the quote that I wrote down was uh, tyranny requires constant effort. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. And with that constant effort, you are gonna get some pushback. It's just the way of the world, I think. Mm-hmm. What's crazy is like the empire in this episode. They could like I feel like they could have started using their blasters a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so they're maybe not as militant as they do become i think I, like, they, were, they were under orders to not kill exactly i think it was it was when they panicked they it's, the, it's the same it, thing with the prison arc the um yeah. was it power doesn't panic or whatever the mm-hmm. exact line was um Fear, yeah. can't yeah, wait no, to talk pa- about yeah, that power, prison power, arc. power doesn't panic um and can we, just, I, can we talk about the prison arc real quick sure okay. I call I it was... the Men in Black ending to the prison arc. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> I I was this whole whole time like I was like I'm hoping we see the different floors so yeah. we get a taste of what they're actually making. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you that don't know or didn't wait through the credits, there is a post credit sequence. So if you haven't seen the post post credit sequence, uh, I guess leave for like 
20 seconds. <laughs> there's not much to talk about it. <laughs> no, there's really not. It felt, it felt a little, I mean, obviously it was tacked on. Didn't sure. really necessarily belong in the story, but I feel like it, it was almost like, I think we were fine, or most people were fine not knowing what they were building. Sure. Was, in the thing. And there was that question that was like, what does that go to? What does that go to? And it kind of was the thing yeah. everyone assumed it would be like, you know. Yeah, I think so. I, didn't, I don't know. I just thought it was like regular old uh, TIE fighter yeah. shit. I, or, or I, kind of, I, liked, I liked the idea that it was nothing important. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. just nothing important. Like, yeah. yeah. Just uh, a way of keeping them down, essentially. So what, Andor is now the Death Star's dad? <laughs> <laughs> That's this is like the only coincidence in the show. It, like, so, it was their Star one Wars. like Easter egg. It's like, oh, oh that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and but, then I mean, the fact that he's the one who wants to go and kill Galen Erso because he helped design the thing when actually he helped build the thing. <laughs> he's building the thing that kills him. Yeah, it's true. Yep. So Snake I, eats his own head. It's it's like it's like poetry. It rhymes. Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> It's pretty like I don't think it's gonna come into play next season at all. He, but just it, it, we need an added scene to Rogue One. We need a special edition where then you know Andor somehow is flying close enough to see those things. Like oh, I did it. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm the monster. <laughs> Or it's like the one that um what's his name? The the older guy was struggling to get through. Like that one causes yes. a failure and actually that's the problem. Like Oh, that's cle- <laughs> that's that's clever. Um but, yeah, God, no. No, but it, the reason I said Men in Black is it is it it's almost has that same effect where pull out. You know, galaxy yeah. small as a marble. It's like, oh well, ha, ha, we're done off, everything's fine. And then it's like, oh, they're just playing with the the galaxy to this alien is just a marble it's you know whatever i don't know it just had that same kind of feel to it yeah 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 tristan here is, uh he liked the end credits thing because it doubled down on the oppression using prisoners to build something so tyrannical mm-hmm. uh yeah it, it is that and we know like from books comics like law of star wars that it you know they used the geonosians to build a lot of the death star as well like so it's it's but right now they're at the point where they're building the super laser that's it. They've they've yeah, moved it. Yeah. They've moved like the structure is pretty much there. They're just yeah. It of... was like perfectly. Uh, you know, I was kind of expecting like a, a Death Star two outside of Endor. Mm. You know, but no, it's like it's done. But that kind of fits into the story where they had it. We're done. about five they years off. Figure out well, the, the laser, right? And the the prologue, the prologue from Rogue One is before this season of Andor, and that's when uh, Krennic like recaptures Galen, and he sort mm-hmm. of says to him, "He's like, the work has stalled." Yeah. So it's like at yeah. that point, like they probably had the structural bit. It was just, mm-hmm. they're working on the super laser. So yeah. that's the only bit that they got to finish off. And we know that they finish it off and install it. During yeah. Rogue One. It's right there. And it, um, and it kind so, of, yeah, five years feels about right. Oh, sorry, go ahead. That's it. I was just saying, it's oh, about I, right timeline. It, but to me, it also kind of sets it up like a clock, you know, just because in Rogue yeah. One, they mm. are placing it into the death star that final piece yeah. yeah and so i like that it's kind of like layered out because then you can kind of just see you know it's like i don't know if they'll if, keep doing it but i was gonna close. say if, if we close. did yeah it's like more and more pieces are coming together right? yeah i like that i like that a lot but they're like five years off right from yeah. we're five they're years five. out of rogue one yeah. so four and a half five yeah by now yeah scott d earlier said uh who called work whacking someone with the marva brick that was me that was that was <laughs> that was me so I so I started this one and I posted it so everyone can see that I was right. And that's a strong brick because I mean it's a big brick. Yeah, yeah I like those it. bricks. They're really oh, nice bricks. Speak, like like uh so Andor walks up into the where uh, his his trader buddy sold him out and got shot and yeah, where yeah. Bix got her head hit. Uh, there he's he was he was touching that brick. And then there was a flashback. I'm like, who's talking? And then I was like, oh, that's his brick. His brick went in that corner. Yeah, and it's his dad's all that brick. Other shit went down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it took me. It took me a little bit to figure out what was going on, but it made sense, and it was a great flashback. It was perfect. Um, it, because it, it just it, enough. It, it didn't do much. It didn't need to do much. All it did was it, mm-hmm. it 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 showed the significance of the bricks. Like it just showed how yeah. important. Yeah, they are, and um, and which, what the people of Ferrix are like, you know, the reusing yeah. of everything because that's what he's doing. He's mm-hmm. he's not. It, there's no no waste. There's no discarded. It's it's yeah. you. There are self sufficient sort of people where, yeah, they turn Dar- into Therian, the bricks. They the 
It's great. Darthurian said he would have liked the brick being an explosive instead of the killed the kid building a bomb. I think we mentioned that list last yeah. week on uh, Geek Dad Life Two. Um, how and it might have even been Darthurian saying that um, putting the brick in the hotel like in a specific spot that yeah. would explode and stuff. Yeah. Um, but after watching this episode and how much reverence is showed towards the brick. I was yeah. like, I don't, I don't think it should be a bomb. Like no, it means much that, more. That brick gets away. That brick is with B but, and uh, Brazo. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like that. Um, that uh, what's his nuts. Brazo. Yeah. Did just whack oh, some people in the head with it. Yep. Like yeah. that's, that's Marva. He's so, hitting him with Marva. <laughs> yeah. That's Marva. Yeah, throw the punch, right? Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's, and she's the one who ignites like the yeah. spark. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, other shows would have had like them shouting and sh shouting at each other, getting all laggy, and then the kid throws the bomb, and that's what kicks it all off. But it's not. It's someone trying to stop the message. It's someone throwing a coat over mm. B two, pushing him over. You don't fuck with B two, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. Like he's he is the only real sort of like air there, and Brazo is <laughs> is doing what he's doing because there's no one else to do it. What I love about that, and I did it. This was our cover art for this week um is he misses the yeah. empire misses the target and so it's just half her face yes. saying like take down the empire fight and i was like i was like well that's the artwork for this week absolutely <laughs> that's what we're using for this and week a huge overcoat and the guy's just like <laughs> he can't but even it's... hit bimo but I mean, he he was like the the most snivelly of the lot of them. Uh, oh, yeah. That was Tigo. Tigo was like the the guy in charge there. If he had and, it his way, he would have murdered them all the second they showed up. But absolutely, because that's the thing. It's like they'd give them they'd given them like permission to be there, like thirty of them to be there, or yeah. forty. I think they they adjusted forty of them to be there at three p.m. But they all showed up early. They were like, no, fuck you. We do it when we want to do it. Yeah. Like. We went through your protocols just as a like a matter of sort of course, but mm -hmm. we're gonna do it when we want to do it, and we're all coming because we yeah. like she is a very well respected. Mm -hmm. The fact that they talked about the the daughters of Ferex as a social club, yeah, when definitely yeah. amongst the Ferex locals they aren't they aren't a social club. They're held to a much higher esteem mm -hmm. than that. Like they are, they like might not be. A, yeah, like they might not be a, like a ruling governing body, but yeah, as you said, like they're a, a council that people basically respect and listen to yeah yeah so that bell ringing last week i think it was you was saying that you can picture cyril up there in a sniper post mm. uh didn't happen we did get a stormtrooper get kicked off which was love that. awesome love but, that okay there wasn't so a wilhelm scream was there though i was like did no, a wilhelm scream? it wasn't no, okay no it wasn't we cut away we one. saw we saw him falling from like the yeah. wide shot yeah but it's a it's a it's a different scream, but it is yeah, fairly yeah. similar. Um, okay, so I was kind of I was needling Jay and Matt on Geek Dead Life Two, mm -hmm. where we talk about Andrew every week, uh, night, every every well, pretty much every Wednesday night after Andor, um, and I was adamant about Dedra and Cyril getting together. And Still didn't happen. But here's here's the thing. While I was closer. watching the scene, when I was watching the scene, uh, and she was just clawing at the dirt, and I'm uh -huh. like, oh, I don't think I want to see them rip her apart, but I kind of want her to get ripped apart. It yeah. was um, it was interesting just seeing her. Essentially, I mean, she got kicked in the head at one point. It was like yeah. it was pretty brutal, but it was yeah. it was that very much. It felt like a mob mentality. <laughs> like they're not going after her specifically. She's wearing an imperial uniform and she was taking shots at them. So they're just gonna mm -hmm. beat the shit out of everyone doing yeah. that. So when we find out that Cyril saves her and, and throws her into the closet. Yeah, the hot Stevie closet. Um <laughs> I my thought was because you know my my theory like I wanted them to get together more than just as business partners. <laughs> I was like I was like I want them to kiss but I don't want to see it. <laughs> That's it. Because in the moment, I'm like any other fucking movie, including one of my favorites, The Rise of Skywalker. I know Jay doesn't like it. Uh, we might have to have Jay on when we actually do our Ooh. Rise of Skywalker episode. I, have I think we could use a different voice of the masses. Theaters. I've only yeah. seen it once. It's oh, well, then there you go. Star Wars I've seen once. Perfect time to revisit when we cover it. <laughs> um, But it, um, like the kiss in that is, I was like, okay, we all wanted it, 
but now that we're seeing it, do we really want to see dirty. it? It's just like, yeah. I wanted this. But so, mm. so the same thing in this episode. There hasn't been any kissing. I don't think there's been a single kiss in the show. No. Uh, Bix and uh, Dickhead from the beginning. Oh. Did they kiss? Uh, they, they, they definitely had... got down, but yeah. you know, we, we didn't see. But you know what I mean? But it's not like. She might have given him a like, peck. But it's not like. There hasn't been. Empire a... Strikes Back. Exactly. Or, or a. Good luck. Rather. There's nothing there, but it's like it drives me nuts when and like it's the whole uh thing from uh, Speed, the movie Speed. You know, they say in high stress situations, people, whatever, um, kiss. <laughs> but <laughs> so with this, I was thinking, this also like, well. I was like, if this was the closest thing to them getting together romantically, the scene was acted so well, yeah, it was, and it's like now, does, does. Does Cyril even care about Andor anymore? Well, that's Does exactly what I want his... to get to. Did he shift his obsession to her? I mean, oh. that's uh, that's what I thought. Like, and uh, Nick Nick says here is uh, he hopes that they build on the relationship between the two of them, only to have one of them throw the other completely under the bus to take power. Yeah. I mean, it'll be Dedra for sure if that happens that way. Um, but I thought exactly the same thing. Cyril was obsessed with Andor when he got there, but then as soon as he saw her. He said it's her. A, it's her, and just the way, the longing, everything about that. He gave. He he wasn't looking for Andor at that point. He mm -hmm. was looking for her. He was trying to save her. When he went running in, it was to save her from that mm -hmm. bomb. Like it's everything, and it's the obsession that, like, dark, twisted. Like, if there is a romance there, it's, it's, it's could just be love. It doesn't have to be twisted or dark. It, not it is not reciprocated. If <laughs> if she ends up she... with him, then I don't think she really wants to be. It's almost like a here's the because here's the thing. There was Let's talk about there. There, was, there was tension. There was like make out tension. I think uh, she two things. She sees. Let's talk in about him, the two but... scenes between them. First okay. on Corazon, where she sees him and he's stalking her, yeah. and he just says that he he thanks her. And nobody's thanked her yet for any of the hard work she's doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that she was has her a slight, thing. She has a slight change in her in her demeanor, uh -huh. but she's she's strong enough to not fall for the bullshit. Sure. But there was a little bit of a of a something else <laughs> when he mentioned mm -hmm. that he thanked her. This is the same thing. She was left out in the street, clawing and dragging for her life, and mm -hmm. the only person to save her was this dude that's stalking her. Um, <laughs> but again. She has that small break and says, I guess I should thank you. And it's like, whatever's happening, he's sort of getting through to another side of her. He's, that we he's, haven't in, seen. he's inching his way up in her standing for sure. Like, he's, he's I, chiseling I, away at her hard armor. I think There's they just... will be together. I don't know if it'll be romantically or as partners or something, but I, I think they definitely will be like a. a or a buddy cop, or maybe that is a buddy cop that is also a relationship uh, going forward. Two, uh, season two starts. They both realize the error of their ways, and they go and have a picnic by the waterfalls uh, of Naboo. No. And they're like, "I can't believe we're so bad. We should join the rebellion." And uh, he is uh, Lor Santeca, and she is um, <laughs> some other. I. The A wing pilot, in, and then she in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> okay, and, oh, she's the one that crashes into the bridge. Uh, yeah. No, that's Cyril. That's actually Cyril. Yeah, that would be Cyril. Green Lido, Green Till, whatever he is. Do we know if that character is is identified by Wikipedia as a male or female? In the one who crashes into the bridge of the yeah Return of the Jedi, because it's, it's, it's portrayed dude. by a, that's a male, but it's portrayed by a, I thought it was portrayed by a lady, but voiced by it's a, dude. a woman. But um... oh, I don't know. I don't know. There's a really nice little, I think, eight-page webcomic about uh, that pilot and his partner, who is also a pilot, um, during that. And it's really sad, but I recommend people check it out. Uh, I will try and find it and tweet it from the live-action Star Wars thing. Or put it on Hive, because we have a <laughs> Hive account. Oh, is that um, like the new thing? I, I keep hearing yeah. all these different like Twitter replacements. I'm like, eh, I'll just wait. Hive, wait for Hive the seems to be gaining traction. Seems to be the uh, one at the moment. Okay. Yeah. This heard uh, Mastodon as well or something. Mastodon's tough. I tried to sign up for it twice and just noped out straight away. I was really? like, mm, okay. nope. You have to pick a server. Yeah, that's that's when they lost me. Um, what does that even mean? 
<laughs> I've heard that it doesn't matter, but still, I'm just like, mm, no. I'm just <laughs> it doesn't matter. It matters. Uh, okay. Hive is good. Hive is Hive is Hive, Hive is Twitter. poor Hive. Poor Hive, you have to be patient. Hive is the andor of apps. Yeah, because oh, it's it's two people running it. It's a oh, singular vision, and there's small things that happen. Like if you're scrolling down, mm-hmm. you have to wait for the scrolling to stop before it can scroll up again. And I feel like it's a flaw, but at the same time, if you're patient with it, yeah, it's much better than dealing with the empire over at Twitter or <laughs> Or the, they're, the, they're, they're, the shit they're that scrappy. makes no sense, the shit that makes no sense, which is um, <laughs> Mastodon. <laughs> Mastodon's like the the Mastodon. Mastodon. They're the, they're the, the high ideas. Cartel. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's let's switch it over. Before, okay, no, before... I do want to call out Stevie's comment here. <laughs> yes. like I kept looking at his mouth and lips. See, I, that's what I saw. She she had that. I'm gonna make out with you, face. <laughs> that, but that, that's what we've all I made out with some weird people that we shouldn't have made out with, Jay. It's oh, absolutely. Fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I mean, they might get together. They shouldn't get together. That's that's my stance on it. I agree. I agree. I think yeah. Cyril's a creep, but yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, before we leave this funeral, uh, my other I thing, blame his mom. Little little nitpicks <laughs> while we're in the midst of the episode here. Oh. People, people are gonna see it. again. It's not from the show. It's okay. The, like it's for you're predicting. What people will say. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna listen to podcast this week, and everyone's gonna be talking about the funeral procession and the instruments and everything. And because Great. they are similar to yeah, figuring Dan and the modal nodes, like instrument looking wise, they're all horned instruments. Mm-hmm. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's jizz because they've they know that that is jizz that is being played in the cantina. Not all horned music in this world is jazz yeah. Yeah. not all horned instruments there are playing jizz jizz is not the only genre of music in star wars so yeah i i just i could see it as soon as i happened i was like this is awesome this is so cool i really am bored of it already of people's hot take of it being I, yeah that it's just it's clearly like a piece of like it's a, a funeral procession song like that's... yeah and it it reminded me a lot of the the theme like I don't know if it was exact. Ooh, I was yeah. waiting. I was waiting for it to come in. Yeah, it, it it was similar. Obviously, like it was wasn't exact. Jay, you're gonna have a better ear for it than I am. But like, yeah. Can I can I just say though, like maybe counterpoint to your thoughts there? Yep. In New Orleans, what do they play? It's as it's, a it's a third line, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Jazz. Yeah, yeah. Jazz. It's a jazz procession. Mm. Yeah. So is this a jazz procession? <laughs> so much Again. jazz. The kids stuff so uh, but I I mean when I when I was I was I tweeted this out earlier on that not all horned instruments are creating jizz. Uh and I was like, oh that's that's some phrasing. Uh <laughs> yep. Uh Adam's here. Adam's joining in the jizz train. Uh, <laughs> jizz. jizz on parade. Yep, that's the rage against uh, the machine version. Um you know we're still fucking 12. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, it's fine. I'm just, you know, I, because the thing is, the Star Wars, the show, is like the one made by adults. Yes, <laughs> this so, is, it feels made by adults, and mm-hmm. so like as soon as we get any sort of thing we can talk about, <laughs> okay, we have to bring it up. <laughs> Uh, Adam joining the jizz train is not something he anticipated hearing this morning. Uh, Adam, I know you've got a podcast to be on later on. Let's see if you join that jizz train too. Um, yeah uh so we saw we saw a lot we saw a lot in this episode and i think we need to jump off of ferrix because otherwise we're going to run out of time and not talk about the stuff over on coruscant with Mon Mothma. Mm. there wasn't masses of it but what we got felt weighty yeah i was so stoked i, I was so it. stoked when she asked him about his gambling uh, i'm no. like oh fuck yeah she's throwing him under the bus fuck this that, is awesome yep she specifically asked for privacy because she knows that her driver is a dickhead spy. Uh-huh. And so as <sighs> like, and she knows that as soon as it starts getting interesting, he's gonna flick it back on and start listening and start reporting mm-hmm. it back. So yeah, throw Perrin. Throw Perrin under the bus. Like you don't need him. Dude's a knob. I wonder if this is like even a greater play because they're going into the finances. Mm-hmm. Now they assume, based on like bad intel, that it's the husband's whatever. Exactly. So then that'll also maybe rope in the the 
you know, a mob guy or whatever it is and his money that's going to be coming into it <laughs> and maybe takes out not only her husband, but this mob guy and the person she's trying to set up her daughter yeah. with or whatever. She, like, she, she gets what she needs out of him. Like that influx yeah. of cash to like settle her funds. But, but at, then, yeah. Yeah. But at the beginning of the scene, we get another shot of uh, focusing on the collar. Mm-hmm. Yes. She has this like jacket she on and loosens she's, it she, where we left her last week where she was like almost in tears or was mm-hmm. in tears. And this week, we it's it's just showing like that time that we don't see her between last week and this week says so much and mm-hmm. she's sitting there this has been weighing on her mind this whole time yeah and when she takes it off and then breathes as soon that as release. he gets into the car it's mm-hmm. like she's I've been got... thinking about this plan and how to get out of this thing all week yeah. or however long it's been in their time not our time yeah. but she she does it and it's like it's like um, we've seen Cyril's close up of his collar and how he's being choked. And they talk about the Empire's choke and Dedra's collar. We've seen that. And now we're seeing her sort of like in this uh, this act of defiance, act of like strength of like, no, no one's choking me. Cyril, I'm in full control. Cyril strikes me as someone who likes being choked, though. I feel like he's going <laughs> to want Dedra to sort of step on him and things like that. I don't know. He just seems... Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, he's 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 modding his his clothing to like get it tighter. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see both Jay. of them get trampled. I want to see both of them get trampled by a shack <laughs> on the <Naboo. laughs> <laughs> oh damn what is happening uh it's been a long season folks um <laughs> 12, listen it's been 12 episodes we have yet to it. have a star wars show have a season this long mm-hmm. it's oh, okay, twice okay. the amount of episodes as as uh obi-wan and i don't want it to stop i, d- I just want I it to keep going it's yeah yeah it's <sighs> And, I mean, and the fact that we know there was a report this week that they, we know that they've just started filming season two, uh, but they're filming until next summer. Like it's, it's a long shoot. Damn. Summer 2023, correct? Summer, yeah. Summer 2023 okay. is when they're shooting. So like, we're not seeing this show. I don't think until 2024. But I feel like uh, Diego Luna posted a tweet today saying that, that he was excited that we could finally watch the final episode and mm-hmm. that it was created under, uh, intense circumstances yeah. so with covid restraints and the way they mm-hmm. got this done during you know 2021 2020 like that mm-hmm. time period so i'm hoping with the amount of effects that this show has yeah so the only thing is is like if they're they can be doing back end as they're going forward sort of thing as they're i'm assuming so, sets yeah. are being built we're already I, being built well, i think so, so. I i'm think hoping they could shoot this and get this out quicker than a mandalorian Sure. Or something else that's real effects heavy, because I mean, this episode we got a shot of the Death Star, yeah, mm-hmm. and a spaceship flying away, and that's some lasers. Yeah, so yeah, it's it, not like it's, it's one of those things that maybe, like, I would hope, like, ideally, that 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 report was that that's that actual production time, not shoot time. Like, that's sure. the that would be my my hope is that yes, okay, yeah, yeah. production time is until like summer twenty twenty three, and then we could get it at the similar sort of time we can get it like back end of 2023 but if it is shoot mm. time for all those months then it feels ridiculously long i think they can make a marvel 12 like, episodes 12 episodes is like four movies yeah, yeah. And especially the way that these guys are producing yeah, I mean, it and probably a lot more practical so many were more than i don't know like I, they're like almost they're almost it's like an hour long show right because they're mostly around 43 minutes they're, they're around the 43 nice. like yeah yeah yeah. Um, um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't want it to be over. Um, and then yeah, we saw. We did see um, Mon Mothma back at her apartment with mm-hmm. the with the introduction of the kid. But sell her off. Okay. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I feel like, <laughs> but I feel like Mon this Mothma. is that point. Like, if you look at the faces, all three of them had different faces. The kid kind of looks like she was anticipating it. She was didn't seem like she was that perturbed or anything, but. As well, Heron, like, Heron, Heron, Heron was Heron just and the daughter were staring at the boy. Ma Mothma was staring at those two. Like, go see you guys, Chandrilla life yeah. buttholes. Yeah, see you later. See I'm gonna have a couple more years in in trying to do something in the Senate, failing, and then I'm go- I'm off to Yavin. Like, see you later. <laughs> Deuces. Yeah, peace. 
It would be. I've got, I, I've I got guess, a ghost to catch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, she's she unbuttoned her collar. She's done. Yeah, yeah. She's done with her family. They're a bunch of buttholes, especially <laughs> Karen. I'm so <laughs> glad she threw him under the bus. Daughter, like you don't. Like, am I, am I the lone parental representative here? Like, you don't stop yep. caring about your kid, even if they're dicks. So, she's her daughter's going to be an imperial officer, one hundred percent. Yeah, she's oh. going to like join ISB or something and be hunting a mum. But then I, mm. I don't know. I still feel like as a parent, you would still love your kid, even if of course they... you're gonna you can love a kid and think he's an absolute dickhead, though. I think that's true. But you're not gonna like uh, 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 write them off or like sell them off and not care about it. Hey, it's part of the culture. It's part of their culture, yeah, and she seems to be into the culture, so let her go. Also, she's like a real shit to her mom. That's yeah. every teenager ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Ralph, were you like the lone person that wasn't like a dick to their parents when you were a teenager? Mm-hmm. But my parents also <laughs> weren't trying to Humble fight too. the Death Star. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I think I think that's the thing. I think that's the sadness though that you see in. She got pushed into that. Yeah, that's the that's when you look at Mon Mothma in that last scene though. Like that's the sadness on her face is the she doesn't want to be doing this. I think she yeah. ideally she'd like to have the parent that she knew at college who was really cool and was a firebrand or whatever they however mm-hmm. they described him. I think there probably was some love there at some point, sure. and the same with their daughter. She's gonna love her daughter, but that sacrifice for the greater good for war for all of these things it's the sacrifices that everyone makes that's the thesis of this show like sure yeah for the greater good that's uh, my yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> climb climb got another mentioned in this episode yeah. um i can't remember where exactly it was but i just wrote down every was, time for uh, the last three weeks i've just written down cassian tells it to the members of the spaceship yeah yeah, climb like get head over the, the lake, over the, the lake, thing. and then climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, New rallying cry for, for really is. Show. You know, a better uh, a better post credit scene would have just been <laughs> Andy Circus still sitting at the top, like nobody's there. It's like <laughs> his feet dangling over the edge. <laughs> it's got a little fishing line. In. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's going to get nominated for an Emmy if he doesn't he win. Should. That's stupid. Oh my god. Um, then they put him in the next season dressed as uh, an imperial fish. No. Ooh, yeah, I could see him like going back in undercover, sort of thing. Like he's... going back in undercover and just yeah. inserting himself into that group when they come mm-hmm. to get. Especially if they keep like some of the staff separate on floors. Like all he has to do is yeah. take out everyone there and like shoot himself in the leg and like pretend to be a survivor. I think I believe yeah. in him. I think he could kill everyone on that floor up top. He's capable. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Dillon, no, that's perfect. That's exactly the lines. Like, guys, can I get a life preserver? <laughs> guys, or like the the fisherman with the the knife hand. They just swoop in, pick him up, and then he's he's. Oh yeah, there you go. There, there you go. go. Yes. Just with that's their how he gets <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she loved net and their quad jumper, and then he ends up back on Jakku, and then he works for. Amor uh, probably could have given those guys like a buttload of credits to go save them. Yeah, true. Oh, definitely. Of course, he could. Yeah. Um, but I like the yeah. idea of him. I want to see Andy Circus in an imperial outfit, um, because it would look rad, and also <laughs> I think that would be great to explain how he got out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could already see it. it's like Andor is doing something, and he runs and like what? And then you have a flashback on how he got there, or whatever. Uh, I like the scene in the ISB. We got that nice wide shot again, yes. like. I don't know if yeah. you guys know about it. There's a there's a subreddit. Uh, it's r slash architecture porn. Uh, it's just pictures of cool <laughs> buildings. And I I like I want to post a nice wide shot of the ISB building because it's a really cool looking building. It's mm. it's one of those they, things. It fits in on the Coruscant skyline, but it looks different enough. And I I was I really staring like at the windows because they're yeah. kind of warped, and it's yeah. like it looks so real. It looks like a real building. That's what I'm saying. I don't did, know if did, it's did, models, a real one, and then like, do we know what that building is? Uh, no idea. No idea. It mm. does remind me a lot of the old design. I think we might have seen an old design of the ISB building, like in EU and stuff. But gotcha. it's, I think it's similar, or at least it was described as a similar oh, sort of building. One. It just occurred to me we're probably going to get a. Cog. We're probably yeah exactly. Mm. I we're going to get a probably a making of. I'm assuming. 
hope Disney so. Gallery. Really um, hope so. They will. They well, will. We could, we're going to have to talk about that. Yeah. For um, sure. Because this show, it's not going to be them explaining the volume to us. Nope. Which we already know about. So yeah. And we, we get Diego Luna's amazing pronunciations of things like Jabber and things like that. I, uh, I love that guy. This thing about R2D2. Mm -hmm. I love him. He's so <laughs> great. He's, yeah, he's a gem. Um, but the scene, yeah, the, sorry, the scene at the ISB, we got off track there. Um, I really liked, there's a line, it was um, taking out, uh, what's his name? Uh, Krieger, Anto Krieger. Uh, oh, yeah. Getting rid of him wasn't about, like getting information. It wasn't about anything like that. All that was, was wiping the taste of Aldani from the emperor's mouth. It was yeah. clearly the, the emperor is raging about everything that happened on Aldani. Like that, how dare they of it all. And so all that was, was the ISB going, we need a win. We need a win now. It doesn't matter. As long as it looks big, we can, we can celebrate it. Even if in the end, it's less for us by taking these guys out, we would have been better off capturing them it's it's that's all we need we basically we need the emperor off our back so that we can get back to doing our real work which uh, whereas dedra just wants to do the real work yeah and like um luthan said as such right i think in the last episode it's just like you know giving them up will you know let them get back to status quo quicker you know and they'll feel more emboldened or uh -huh. whatever and not have to you know like so it's almost or maybe it was the one before whatever it was like he called it. He called it. If we, if if they are let led to believe that they wiped them out, that is better for the cause. And, and yeah. there you go. You saw it in action. And yeah, not getting a win means getting force choked during the, the the Monday meeting. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, that is exactly it. They these guys are smart. They know how to deal with Palpatine. I think. Well, it's bureaucracy, um, right? Like it's any you get a group of people together, bureaucracy forms, and like this is case in point uh, a, a bureaucracy of fear. This is what you get. You don't get top level work. You get people trying to please the authority or whatever it is. And thank God the show didn't show Palpatine. We yeah. didn't need it. We didn't need it. Didn't need it. We That's didn't get any. About. Like this, if they were ever to do cameos, it was going to be this episode, and we didn't get it. All we got was the the post credit scene, which was Death gonna, Star that's, cameo. That's fine. Yeah, Death Star cameo, but we don't. But it's, we don't. it's part of this story. Exactly. And it's part of, if you count this as part of like Rogue One, it's all part of that story as well. Exactly. Yeah, it's it. all fits nicely. Um, no lightsabers. We made it through without a lightsaber. It's like, poetry. yeah. Every, like people were talking about Luthan being a, 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 a Jedi Sick. and that his thing was, don't want it, don't need it. His thing is a knife. We've seen it on a toy. Yeah, we saw it, we saw it in the first episode. Like, like, we saw this already. Like, oh, did we see it already? I can't remember. But yeah, the, like, isn't that third episode right and he like goes out into this like i thought yeah, yeah. i thought it was just a walking, walking stick. stick his cane that yeah. yes he could beat someone over the head with yeah. if he needs to but like it's not it's not a lightsaber give it up yeah. people um, speaking of knives that do get stabbed by uh since yeah. since i love that move i like that as well like it proves that since has been competent this whole time she's clocked yeah. that this guy is following he's in the right place at the right time watching uh -huh. all the right things she isn't it's not spy versus spy it's I know what you're up to. You don't uh -huh. know what I'm up to. She's she's had the one up on him. Yeah, and I and I love it too because like again, yeah, a, a more you know, a run of the mill show. He would have captured her and blah 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 blah. It was like no, she's like ending this now. You're dead. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And you're and you're in a first... cupboard. Like you don't even need to be seen or found. You don't. Yeah. No one's. Yeah. It's an inconsequential. Is this the first thing. time we've seen get someone get killed by a knife in Star Wars? Can't be. No. 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 Uh, Ray's parents. Um, Ray's parents get Aren't... knifed by Uchi of Uchi of Bestoon. Is he? Does he? Yeah. Was that in Rise of Skywalker? I don't. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know if it was shown, but it definitely happened that way. It might be in. When we do Rise of Skywalker, you're one hundred percent coming on the show. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Because the thing is, I, I because me, me and James. Are huge fans. I've got. A, I've got. We a don't want to be in Rise echo chamber for this episode. Oh boy! Um, oh, as as they were coming around the corners, <laughs> and the the Empire are going, they're scrambling because they haven't got their perimeter set up or anything mm -hmm. yet, and they're flooding out into the streets. But you see the funeral procession, the size of it. It's it just reminded me of like Lando popping in and just be like, but there are more of us, and it's yeah. it's that thing. It's like, yeah, we might not all be fighters, we might not be the best people, but we got the numbers. We can take you down, like. 
we can out we can survive this if we bum rush you essentially like yeah that's the thing not all of those ships that arrived at the end of rise of skywalker were fighters but they were all there they could all you know do their part uh, the only the only other quote that I've got written down was from Rogue One, uh, and it was uh, I think it's K two that says it is the well you're a rebel now or we're rebels now or something. It's it's there's something like that. I'm pretty sure it was a trailer line, um, and that just reminded me like that's the end of the season. That's that's Cassian at the very end. Like mm-hmm. you're in it now, kid. Like yeah, yeah, but on yeah. his own terms. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. for the right reasons. I rebel. <laughs> I rebel. Rebels, this show's terrific. James has just a little bit more time, and I don't uh-huh. want to hold Jay up because we are going to talk about this again tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, tonight. Over at Geek Dad Life 2. Um, I'm going to pop this guy I'm up. Be uh, oh, wow. Is, is, there even, is, there even a, is there even a link to Geek Dad Life 2 on your geekdadlife.com? Well, I haven't that website in like a year. But okay. Uh, it's. But just uh, again, search YouTube, search Geek Dev Life 2. Oh, yeah. YouTube now has handles. So if, I'm pretty sure if you type out at Geek Dev Life, Geek Dev Life. Or, 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 yeah, the Geek Dev Life channel, there's a big link to Geek Dev Life 2 on the Geek Dev Life channel yeah. at Geek Dev Life. Mm-hmm. And we'll be mm-hmm. there talking with Matt. Um, final thoughts on the series on the, the best. The best. The best. It it's, is. The, it's, it's the best, the best Star, Wars Star Wars TV. It might be the best Disney Star Wars. It's very possibly the best Disney Star Wars. Um, it's probably cracked my top five Star Wars. Uh, like I, I haven't thought about it in depth, but it is making a good run for it. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's I can't think of flaws. I really can't. Like, I'm sure that there's yeah. things that I would have gone, oh, okay, maybe this, maybe that, but I really like off the top of my head, I can't think of many, if any. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I agree. Like, because I was trying to think like best of the Disney Star Wars, and I know this is a a solo stand channel, but mm-hmm. uh, oh, but you know oh, every single like, even though I did really like Solo, I loved Rogue One. But there, to your point, like there's those moments like, eh, that's kind of like, mm, you know, there's there's parts where it's like, eh, okay, it's just it's not perfect but it's damn near close but like this season they're just or or even mandalorian or whatever there's just those moments like oh that episode was kind of boring or whatever like i don't know they just they every single choice or creative choice they made i think was the right choice and there was even i think as we mentioned a lot in this in this episode even in our own heads we thought of easier choices that would have popped easier or better or or you know just easier in terms of taking the easy way out and they yeah. didn't choose any of them they always chose the more impactful creative choice and that's yes. why i think why it ranks so high for me as well yeah it was the least yeah. predictable yeah like you try yeah. to do theories on what's going to happen but you're like i'm going to give up on trying to do theories because they're doing it better than just i just in i'm in for that. the ride for sure yeah. Mm-hmm. it's yeah it's like, great well, um next week before Sorry, you Ralph, go, your, your, your quick last thoughts. Oh, I thought it was perfect. But before okay, we get going, before we go, there's something that I have to do. It's a mm-hmm. little bit of a ceremony. And here it comes. Oh. It's happening. We're back to live action Star Wars regular edition oh. background. And the OG. It's horror. been a while. It's been a few months since we've seen that. Yeah, um, this is, it's the longest. Yeah. Uh, and I want more, 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 more. <laughs> if they can do shows like this... Give them to me like this. Uh, If the Acolyte is like this, then amazing. I can't wait. And Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Jedi was great too. It was. I haven't watched it. But now that I'm out of now that I'm out of Andor mode. Okay, so that brings us to next week. Uh, uh, Me and James didn't discuss it. We were supposed to, but we got too wrapped up in stuff before the show. Um, I say we do this, James. Yeah. Next week we'll return on YouTube exclusively to do a data link episode. Uh, we'll figure out in the time before then to do a data link. It'll give us time to sort of decompress, not worry about homework. Yeah. Uh, unless, unless it is uh, tales of the Jedi, then I'll watch it, but um, it'll, it'll be take you it'll, an hour. Yeah. It's so fun. next week, for those of you listening to the audio version of this, this will be a YouTube exclusive, our data link episode episode. And then in two weeks for our next regular episode, do you want to do troops? <laughs> do you yeah, wanna... let's do it. We were the, okay. the one that we were going to do before. 
but I got I had a kidney stone that knocked right. me out that week. That's right. So yeah, I forgot. I completely so we'll forgot that. about troops. Yes, let's do troops. So our next regular episode will be in two weeks, where we'll cover troops. Next week we'll have a data link episode on YouTube only, and that will be um, we'll figure it out. We'll uh, it you out. can you can find all of the things on uh, still on Twitter uh, and on Instagram and on Hive uh, uh, live action style uh, live action SW and all of those, um, and you can find us in these places. Right. Uh, guys, thank you for an amazing season. Jay, thank you for joining us. Ralph, Jay, look forward to talking to you and Matt again because I think we can go on forever. Yeah, we could. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to thank you for having me on. Honor as always to be uh, asked to join uh, uh, you fine gentlemen and uh, talk Star Wars with you. It's always good. Yeah. It's always good fun. Uh, guys, until next week or two weeks time, whenever you rejoin us, don't give me to hate. Celebrate the love. Punch it.